Hello and welcome to the Kinetic Coasting YouTube channel. My name is T or Chris. Today I'll be going over how you can improve the performance on your Minecraft server. So we're going to take a number of different steps you can take. There's quite a few. And we're going to go through and um, optimize um, things like the startup flags. We're going to optimize some configurations. We're going to optimize the version you're running. Um, and hopefully at the end of it, if you're having any performance issues on your server, they will be solved. Now, like with all our tutorials, and probably sick of me saying this, this isn't just for kinetic hosting clients, this is for everybody. So it um, doesn't matter whether you're a different uh, provider, doesn't matter whether you are self-hosting, um, this tutorial you should be able to follow along with and I'll make sure I keep you in mind um, when you know saying stuff. Uh, just, just we'll be using our own panel, of course, um, as demonstration purposes. Now, um, the first thing we're going to do, the first biggest thing we're going to do is change the version that our server is running. So you might already be running this if you kind of know stuff about servers. If so, you can just ignore this step. What we're going to do is we're going to change our server to running paper. Now, if you are just running just base vanilla Minecraft, this comes with the extra perk that um, you can run plugins with paper and um, so you can get extra commands and stuff like that so we'll change this over to paper now if you're with kinetic hosting uh, you can go like i just did to the version installer down the bottom here and you can just press install and this will install the latest version of paper for you um, if you are not with kinetic hosting and yourself hosting whether you can just go to the paper website here just allow that there we go uh, and you can just download the latest version here now it's always worth keeping these updated so checking back here and downloading the latest version again if you're with kinetic hosting this version will always be the latest so if you want to update every now and again just go here and press the install button again and it'll just update it to the latest version for you so now we've done that we've installed paper the next thing we're going to do is turn on something called the alcohol flags or the al alicar alicar alcohol flags I, I never know how you meant to pronounce them they're these things here so um i'll link this in the description down below if you're not with kinetic hosting these are the flags you need to set and i'll just cover those in just a second in a little bit more information but if you are with kinetic hosting you can go to your overview page and there's a little toggle for them here just do that and that's them toggled on we've done everything for you that's set now what these flags are is they are um, startup arguments for your server so they're basically a list of instructions that tells Java how it should manage things on your server so what they've been done they've been tweaked to make sure they get the optimum memory management of your server and CPU stuff all, all kinds of stuff basically it's just the most optimal set of instructions for your server um, to run so it's worth toggling these on these can make a massive difference now if you're not with kinetic hosting then you can copy these flags from here. Just make sure you change out the Java, uh, the RAM amounts for whatever your server you're running. So if you're running under 13 gigabytes of RAM on your server, you need these ones. Again, make sure you change up these though to whatever you're running. And if you're running over, you need these ones. Now, if you are running something like Pterodactyl Panel, which is a really popular management panel for Minecraft, you need to make sure you don't give all of your system's memory away. More information here is about that. So you need to drop it, say, one gigabyte under. Um, so, for example, um, this is a six gigabyte server here. If I wasn't, if I was um, running a pterodactyl panel or something like that, I'd only, I'd only want to put five on my startup parameters, but keep the server having six. If that makes any sense, that leaves room for Java and stuff to run. If you're with Kinetic Hosting, we manage all that for you with just that toggle switch. All you need to do is press that. Okay. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to change our Java version. Now, we're thinking the players are in 1.19 with this tutorial. If you are in a lower version, this might not be something you can do, so you're probably worth skipping over it. But what we're gonna do is gonna to go to this Java toggle down here, and we're gonna change this to Open J9 17. So Open J9 is a optimized or more optimized Java runtime environment. So you can get more performance out of your server just by switching that over. But of course, if you're running an older version of Minecraft um, through our panel, like 1.8 or whatever, you'll still need Java 8, so you can't flick over to this. It does have possibly some drawbacks, however. It does have complete incompatibility with Forge. Um, so you'll need you can't drop it to this if you're on Forge, and if you're with um, some other versions, might have incompatibility issues with it as well. So if you if you switched over this and you're getting crash issues, then just keep that in mind. It could just be this and drop it back. Um, so just worth keeping in mind. But this can improve the performance of your server. Now, if you can't change this over on whatever provider you're on or yourself, then 
yeah, it's fine. It's, it's just a little extra step. You can just keep it on normal Java. The next thing we do is now we're going to dive into the configs. So for that, I'm just going to start up our server quick, just so we can generate um, those configs that we need. Let's go over here. Server is starting. Okay. Let's load the libraries in. And accept the Minecraft ULA. There you go. It's just taking a little bit long because it's the uh, first load. Now that should have generated all of the files for us. Okay, so we can just stop the server there. We don't need the world to load. Yep, that's fine. Right, so the first the next thing we can do is we're going to change some stuff in the server properties file. Now, um, if you're not of Kinetic Coaster, you can go to where if you're current to the file manager is and you can click here and it opens up the, the file for you. Or if you'd rather a GUI layout and you've Kinetic Coaster, you can go down to server configuration and they're all actually in here like so. It's just whatever you prefer. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to look for in here is we're going to change our simulation distance. I'm going to take this and we're going to just go drop that down to 5. And then we're going to look for something called our view distance as well, which we should find in here somewhere. Where is it? Here we go, view distance. We're going to drop that down to 6. So what this is, this is how far players can see on your server. And this is how far things are simulated on your server. And this is measured in chunks. So five chunks out from every player, stuff will be simulated. So stuff will happen. Mobs will move around. Outside of five chunks outside your servers, mobs won't move. So these are set to default by at 10. And honestly, dropping this down to five, players won't really notice it, like at all. So it's worth dropping this down to five. If you go any lower than five, players are going to start noticing. With the view distance, this is how far players can see on your server. So on your client, you probably know that you have the view distance slider, and that's how far out you can see. Well, on servers, you can set that server side. And again, by default, that's set to 10. But if we drop it down to 6, it's a barely noticeable thing, and it improves the performance on your server massively as well. So we're just going to drop those down. One thing to note is if you are worried about you know, the view distance not being very far, you can install a mod called Farsight. I'll link it in the description down below. And that allows for you to see chunks that you've been through before. So let's say you are out walking around and you, 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 you know, you've loaded a bunch of chunks in. Your client will cache those chunks and then that will populate the areas that you can't see on the server, making the view distance look bigger, if that makes any sense. I'll link that in the description just in case you're worried about that. But there are two big key steps you can take. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over into the file manager. And we've got to go down into the bucket YML. Now, all of these settings that I'm going to be saying here are listed on our knowledge base. I'll link this down in the description down below. Uh, and we're basically just going to go down all of these and set these in our server because these are the most optimal um, settings you can change that won't have an impact on the way your server, you know, the way you play on your server. For example, we're going to turn how many monsters spawn in your server down around each player. If you go below 30 then you're really going to start to not see any monsters or mobs or anything anywhere and um, so it's worth not going lower than that you can if you really want to optimize even more but these are the lowest we found you can go to without actually impacting um how you play on the server so let's go back to this so like we said we're going to change our monsters down to 30 so what this means is how many spawn around a player so 30 mobs can spawn around a player the reason we can drop this down from 70 to 30 is because often a lot of these mobs are spawning underground where the player isn't so you're not really gonna notice um the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change water ambient down to five so these are things like fish so it doesn't particularly matter that they've been scaled down um, we're going to keep axles and, and um, water underground creatures the same. And then ambient, so these are things like bats, we're going to set them down to two because they're not really important at all. Now, if you do notice an impact to the amount of mobs and stuff that are spawning around you, then you can come in here and adjust these at any time. Next thing was we're going to go over to the period in ticks of the uh, chunk GC here. So this is going to set that to 500. And once we've done that, um, we're going to save the file like that now if you're worrying wonder what this doing this is often this is how often the chunk garbage collector comes through so this is if there's a bunch of chunks stuck loaded this is how often it will come through and clear out those chunks if you set it lower than 500 you're going to cause all kinds of funkiness on your server uh, and it can cause more lag issues than it solves because you've got chunks being deloaded that shouldn't be and they're reloaded again so it causes all kinds of oddness so don't go below 500 with that one and we're just going to save like so now we're going to go back to our file manager 
and we're going to look for the spigot YML, which is down here. Okay, so inside the spigot YML, we're just going to scroll. We're just going to look for the entity tracking range. Now, a quick way we're going to find this by using our panel. You better do it on yours too. I should expect, or most file explorers, we're just going to press Control and F. That brings up this little search box, and we're just going to type in entity dash tracking range. See, it's already in there for me because I've already searched it. I'm just going to press F. Oh, enter. It's going to take us to it. Now, we're going to tweak these down, but not too far, because this uh, if you tweak these down too low, you are really going to feel it on your server. These are how many, tra uh, how many chunks uh, entities are going to be tracking stuff. So players, we're just going to drop that down to 32. Um, for animals, we're just going to drop that down to 16. You don't really need them track outside the chunk you're in. Um, for monsters, we could keep that at 48, because if we drop that down, then we're going to cause all kinds of weirdness of how mobs are. You are going to notice it. And for other here, we're just going to drop that down to 32 as well. Again, these are other settings. If you start to start to feel them, um, you know, start to feel that mobs are behaving funny on your server, then you can go in there and tweak these up. But you really shouldn't. We've done some uh, testing just to make sure these are the optimal ones. This thing we go look for is item despawn rate. And again, we can do the same things we did before. We can go up in here. I'm just going to paste it in from our wiki, but we're just going to type in item dash despawn rate, and then press enter. Now this is how quickly items will despawn on your server. Um, just keep in mind that this is changing how quickly items despawn on your server. This this will, you know, if you drop an item on the floor, this will be, you know, how quick it takes to despawn. So you might not want to change this setting. Um, but if you are running a public server, then you are. It is worth halving that, and um, that will improve some of the performance of your server. But if you're playing with just a few friends and you don't want items despawning really quickly, then it might be worth just leaving that one how it is. The next thing is we're going to look at arrow despawn rate. Um, I'm just going to search that again as we did before. So the control F. I'm going to paste it in, but you just type in arrow dash despawn rate. I'm just going to press enter. Now this is how quick arrows despawn on your server. Now that's not as important, so we're just going to set that to 600. So if you've drawn your bow and fired an arrow and it's stuck into a block, this is how quickly it will despawn on your server here, like so. So we're going to set it down to 600 and half that. Now, we're going to set the merge radius as well for some things. So again, we're going to do the same thing as what we did before. We're going to press Control F, and we're going to type in merge hyphen radius. I'm pasting this in here because you don't want to hear me just absolutely pounding by keyboard. It's much better if uh, it's much better if I just paste it in there for you. So we've got the merge radius. So this is how far away items will merge from each other. So if I've chucked um, an item down on the floor and it's 2.5 blocks away, then the sort they're merged together and those two items will become one item but still if you walk over them and suck them into inventories there'll still be those two items this is just for performance things so we're just going to set this to five and the same with xp here we're going to set this to five too again this might not be a big change on your server and this will be more noticeable if you're running some kind of um um if you're running some kind of public server or something like that Okay, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to go into config up here. Then we're going to go into paper world defaults. Now, if you are running an older version of Minecraft, this will be in a different file. It'll just be in here, and it'll be called paper YML, much like the speaker YML. They recently moved it into the config folder here, and then into here. And in here, we're going to look for something called per, per player mob spawns. Now, if we just paste that in again. And go to here right so this is means that the mob spawns will be per player rather than a big global mess so we're just going to put that to true that will improve this won't help performance but it will help how mobs are distributed across players now it looks like by default in newer versions it's set to true but in older versions this might not be set to true so it's worth going ahead and checking now once that's all done you're actually set these are the one of the most optimal settings you've got set on your server you've got your flags you've got your java version you have got your um, optimal settings set here, you're all ready to go. That should improve the performance on your server drastically. If it doesn't, I've linked a video in the description down below which covers how to track down lag on your server and find out what might be causing issues. 
Anyway, that's it for today. If you'd like to pick up a Kinetic Hosting server, then I've got a link to the description down below. I've got a link to the package I'm using here, the 6 gigabyte Minecraft performance in the down below as well. Um, if you like the look of our panel and what we're doing here, um, you can go pick that up. Um, like I said, I have also have the video that covers how you can detect lag on your server and pick that up. I'll link that in the description down below as well. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. If you're a Kinetic Hosting client, then please reach out to our support team if you have any issues or questions. That's over on our discord which is kinetichosting.net forward slash discord likewise you can head over there and have a chat with us if you're thinking about picking up a server or just have a chat just have a chat we're open to chat we're friendly people anyway i hope you have a fantastic day and enjoy your less laggy server